Hello everybody, myself Dr. Ashok Kumar Biswarapur, Associate Professor, Department of Education, Karnataka State Akkamadhi Women's University, Jaipura. Today we shall discuss about CTE, Certificate Course in Teaching English. In that, we will continue our discussion on who are the language learners. And what are the factors that affect learning contexts on learners and different types of learners, personal qualities of learners and implications for curriculum, curriculum design and implementation. <clears throat> learning in a wide variety of domains and in many different ways begins in early childhood and some continues into old age. The learning of languages, especially the first language, the child requires, is an area in which the great creativity of human learning is very easy to see. Young children, as we all know, learn to speak the language or languages used in their homes and local communities almost effortlessly. This happens even when there is no planning and organized instruction by persons functioning as teachers. Thus, an important feature of human language learning is that a great deal of it takes place outside the formal context of school and college. Very young children learning to speak their mother tongue through the process of socialization which is the best example of this. We also know that older learners, even those who are not literate, learn to speak a new language, especially when they move to a new place where the commonly used language is not one they already know. Informal and unplanned learning of languages is very common and widespread. This means that language learners are not always pupils in a class. In this respect, language learning is very different from the learning of typical school subjects like history or botany or biology. When we talk of learning these subjects, we are in fact referring to learning that is linked very directly to teaching because people do not learn such subjects on their own. It is true that some people get very interested in certain areas related to academic subjects as hobbies and after a long period of study on their own may even become experts in these areas. But this applies only to a few very highly motivated individuals. On the other hand, informal language learning is something that most ordinary people seek to manage. Not only a minority who are very interested or who have special abilities and qualifications. So we have seen that how uh, the mother tongue influences on uh, the learning uh, L2 that is uh, uh, second language. We also noted that individual learners have a unique personal learning history which influences their patterns of further learning. Undoubtedly, we must recognize and respect these consequences when dealing with individuals. Seeking to understanding uh, this is a very important uh, the platform where we will come across the, how society and community influences on the personality uh, characters and personality traits of an individual. Seeking to understand how they learn and 
how their learning can be supported. At the same time, when we are concerned primarily with language instruction, we have to think in terms of categories of groups of learners. We cannot in any meaningful sense have 1000 different theories and 1000 separate curriculum packages if we are dealing with 1000 learners. So instruction has necessarily to be planned for groups of learners in the first instance, while efforts can and should be made to promote individualization at the action teaching stage. That is a very important uh, aspect in the, the language, uh, language learning. Uh, uh, that is a new platform where uh, the learner exposes themselves to learn new language. Now, what are, who are the different types of learners? How they learn? As we have uh, seen in our society, many learners of language are not in school or college. So, it is not very useful to categorize them mainly in terms of their class or level in the formal system of education. Rather than this uh, administrative aspect, features which can directly affect their attitude and motivation are more relevant. Uh, let us see how uh, these features emerge for learning foreign language. Uh, the first one, stage of development in mastering the language. There can be young learners who are quite advanced or skilled and older learners who are only beginners. Learning a language is a slow and long drawn out process. Learners can be at many different stages of progress towards high proficiency or mastery. Obviously, the way of learning, the need for teacher support the capacity and willingness to do certain tasks will vary with the stage of progress. So, a broad category like young learners can include a variety of types based on how far they have progressed. Second one, the degrees of dependence on externally planned instruction. The general context of a learning in language is another factor that has a strong influence on the learner's motivation and involvement. When language is being learned informally, especially through the process of socialization, the learners may not even be aware that he or she is learning the language. This is because the focus of attention when there is interaction in natural or real life situation is communication sending and receiving messages by using language. Conscious attention to learning the rules of language is not usual or typical here. <clears throat> the fact that informal learning is taking place is important when we are considering the teaching of first language. Alongside the classroom based learning of language, the natural process of using it are also going on. The formal syllabus usually recognizes only what goes on in class. But learners, especially younger ones, are very unlikely to keep language use in watertight compartments as the saying goes. <coughs> so, the learners contact with the real and meaningful use of the target language. So, here the target language means first language and second language represents a valuable opportunity that should be exploited imaginatively by the teacher. And third one, degree of completion in the study of language. Let us consider planned and formal instruction in a target language. This is what we have described and learned, discussed earlier as the context for studying the role of a pupil. Two broad institutional contexts are possible. In the first case, the student is taking a prescribed language course because it is a part of the formal syllabus requirements for the 
matriculation or intermediate certificate. Here, final examination marks can become very important to the student and the examination scheme will usually determine what is seen as significant and worthwhile among the topics and activities of the curriculum. The second context for formal study is the one in which the student makes a conscious decision to take a language course even though it is not required. The best example of this free choice is enrollment in a part-time language course as an additional activity. Now let us see the effect of learning context on learners. So here in this uh, case, uh, the contexts are very uh, important. The different contexts in which a person could be in the role of learner of a particular language. All these contexts uh, represent the conditions outside the learners. Uh, they are not related in any way to the learner's personal qualities such as health and stamina, mental ability or educational qualifications. Anyone could be at any stage of progress towards mastery of the target language. Anyone could be studying a foreign language through a part-time evening course. The interesting point about this context is that they can influence the general attitude and motivation of the individual in his or her role as learner. Each context in a very general sense can be linked to a certain type of learner approach. The combination of attitudes and motivation that goes with each type is relevant to our discussion because this can affect the level of effort on the learner's part and this can as we know influence how successful learning is. So uh, successful learning takes place when there is a perfect bond of relation between a teacher and taught. It is easy to see that a person who has made a conscious decision to try and become proficient in using a language will have a favorable attitude and be highly motivated. We would all agree perhaps that teachers of such students are very fortunate. On the other hand, it is true that many students are caught up in situations, especially in formal education where they have to study a language simply because it is a requirement in the plus two or degree syllabus. They may not have any genuine interest in learning the language beyond passing the examination. A teacher with many such people still does face a discouraging situation. However, it is important to see this in the context of formal education. Here, a major part of any program is made up of compulsory courses which all students have to study, whether they are really interested or in or like all the subjects and topics. So this problem is one that all teachers face. The need is to make the curriculum in operation, the actual activities in the classroom interesting to the pupils. Pupils, pupils, uh, the pronunciation is as it depends upon the individual. In one sense, the language teacher, especially the teacher of language in India has certain advantages. Language is something that children are always using. Further, English is fairly widely seen as an asset because of its association with job opportunities and social prestige. So the English teacher is better off than the teacher of compulsory mathematics or compulsory geography. The general principle we need to note here is that the context of learning is linked to expectations. Those students who are mainly concerned about meeting examination related 
the requirements will want to see evidence of teaching or classroom activity that they feel is going to be useful in this respect these learners uh, may not uh, readily put in a lot of time and effort related to extra activities even though these are seen by the teacher and curriculum designer as desirable similarly learners who are very keen on learning to speak well and with confidence may be quite resistant to grammar exercises or in depth discussions on the views of some essayist or poet the teacher needs to be aware of the learners expectations but of course a curriculum cannot be reduced to only those things learners clearly want this is a for the teachers resourcefulness in motivating students become important so we have seen how the different types of learners uh, are there and what are their expectation and how um, they need the contexts to learn the foreign language that is english language uh, here we have focused on the context in which a person relates to a target language as a learner and seen how this factor influences the attitudes and the motivation of learner the same person can be a learner of two different languages at the same time and have a different general approach in each context here we see that a general rule about the learner need not always be applicable even to the same individual we shall now turn to look at some of the more uh, personal qualities of individual that seem to be relevant to their behavior as learners of language so let us take the first one general scholastic ability difference among peoples in the speed and effectiveness of learning school subjects is something we are all familiar with the general mental ability that underlines uh, scholastic success is loosely called intelligence the terms bright and clever are also used to indicate high level of mental ability the notion of intelligence is strongly linked to the capacity to think to reason logically to solve abstract problems and so on it is true that this capacity is very useful in coping with the school work and doing well uh, in formal written examinations but we must remember that intelligence in this narrow sense is not absolutely essential for gaining proficiency in a target language this is the significance of the fact that we have noticed while discussing uh, in the previous our video lesson that persons who who never went to school and are illiterate can still be quite skilled and fluent users of language in its open form such persons would not normally do well in conventional intelligence test even so their language development seems quite satisfactory the point to be noted here is that the so called bright pupils who get high marks in most examinations need not be the best language learners other people who are probably classified as average by teachers might prove to be very good at language learning we must be careful not to underestimate uh, under uh, i mean uh, underestimate their ability second one cognitive style uh, one of the interesting findings of research into men mental or cognitive process is that the individuals have certain typical or preferred styles of perceiving the environment thinking and problem solving these individuals differences are not differences in the level of cognitive ability which would make some persons more successful in learning than others uh, <clears throat> these styles are genuinely alternative patterns something 
like being left handed or right handed the research done in the area of cognitive style and its impact on language that is a very uh, important one uh, the acquisition uh, of this uh, we will uh, discuss in uh, our next video so in that uh, what we have uh, told that in the first one the uh, second and the cognitive style the cognitive style is very uh, remarkable development uh, in the uh, among the people's uh, new language learning so let us see uh, the possible start of uh, this cognitive styles variations uh, and uh, which are the types of these uh, styles we will see in the <coughs> coming call of second row. in that first row, let us see reflection versus impulsiveness some persons are relatively quick in coming uh, to a conclusion or taking a decision when faced with an open ended situation others tend to pause and reflect and consider various possibilities fairly thoroughly before coming to a decision obviously both styles have advantages and disadvantages examples of classroom situations where these differences might show are selecting a question or an essay uh, topic when a choice is provided second one suggesting solutions or approaches during the discussion of some problem any class will have a few pupils of both types pupils who are impulsive rather than reflective will probably make more mistakes but they may also learn more because they are more active second one risk taking versus cautiousness this dimension is related to how much confidence about winning or being correct a person needs in order to act decisively risk takers are those who are prepared to take a chance even when they are not very sure they are going to be correct they are not very anxious about being wrong sometimes persons who are cautious on the other hand will not act or move forward unless they are quite sure they will be correct or successful in doing something they seem to be more concerned about avoiding failure or defeat than in gaining some success at least people of both types are found in the typical class obviously the ways in which they tackle the same situations and problems will be different and third one field independence versus field dependence this dimensions of difference among individuals is linked to that way of perceiving and responding to the situations which they have to attend to some persons take in the whole uh, stimulus situation and respond to this overall impression without paying much attention to component and details they also tend to be sensitive to the attitudes and opinions of the people around them such persons are called field dependent those whom we call field independent are more likely to analyze a given situation and see parts and relationships among parts they pay less attention to the overall picture or fit they are likely to be more interested in the practical and technical aspects of problems to be tackled than in working with others and making teamwork their priority pupils who are more field dependent usually need more structuring and guidance from the teacher the relatively field independent ones are more able to break down a general requirement or job into smaller parts and start working towards these short term goals for instance when a project or assignment is suggested the latter type may be able to pick up a general idea and begin to develop a plan more or less on their own 
the others may need more guidance from the teacher about such a plan of action they may also need more support and reassurance from the teacher while working on the plan it is important to note here that these people are not weak learners who need a lot of spoon feeding they too can think on their own and produce high quality work like their more field independent peers it is only their style of getting started and working that is different and fourth one divergent thinking versus convergent thinking this dimension is based on the distinction that is sometime made between intelligence and creativity some psychologists have suggested that there is a significant difference between solving given problems directly in an expected or recommended manner uh, and taking a fresh look at the nature of the problem itself in the former case the framework of the problem as given or commonly understood is accepted and the correct or best solution is pursued in a logical and systematic way this type of problem solving is what we associate with intelligence the style is called convergent thinking because the process seems to be one of narrowing down and gradually reaching the correct solution the second style involves raising questions about the problem itself and the way it has been presented this approach may lead to reframing and reformatting the problem and this makes unexpected or unconventional or creative solutions or approaches possible the term divergent thinking is used because of the process of opening up rather than narrowing down that is uh, this this is often used convergent thinking are often used in our discussion okay we know all here many important discoveries or formulations of new theories in various fields have been associated with leaps of the imagination or breaking out of the conventional way of approaching problems it is easier to see that divergent thinking is what leads to new or original interpretation of literacy and other texts and throws up the ideas or images that go into artistic production on the other hand where the problems are such that rules have to be followed rather than broken convergent thinking is more appropriate and uh, next one personality disposition so the qualities mentioned in the convergent thinking styles are linked to ways of perceiving and thinking an individual's personality as we usually think of it has more to do with ways of behaving and ways of relating to the social environment some of these dimensions of personality are nature or outgoing extroverted versus withdrawn introverted second one active and energetic versus lethargic and sluggish and third one positive self concept versus negative self concept these dimensions do not indicate neat categories the nature or personality of individuals can be more in one direction than in the other various dispositions such as these will influence the way people's behavior are participate in class they will make certain types of activity or social situation more comfortable or acceptable to the individual and similarly certain other activities might be difficult or unpleasant it is important to remember here to that these are only different ways of behaving they are not directly linked to high or low ability or capacity to learn and second one handicapped learners a significant number of people in schools have 
handicaps of various types some of them especially poor hearing can interfere considerably with the learning process so regarding this uh, we'll see uh, later on another part of our discussion uh, in the this course so here uh, we have discussed uh, regarding the styles of thinking in detail now let us focus on implications for curriculum design and implementation or teaching <clears throat> there are uh, we have noted that the characters of that are associated with each type can influence the way of responding uh, to a learning situations these are the learners uh, situations in the uh, new learning platform of course individual learners have their own unique qualities which are important for their learning but uh, these differences cannot be known in advance and clearly planned for in designing a common curriculum <coughs> curriculum planners should uh, try and get information about the variability within the group of learners being targeted by the course structure i mean new course of structure it is true that all the needs of different subgroups cannot be met the important principle here is that we should not assume that the characters of one subgroup that we know well are a proper indication of all other subgroups in many of our centralized state syllabuses for various subjects we can find a hidden assumption regarding uh, the average child it seems to be taken for granted that each child comes from an educated urban family living in a house with the modern amenities a similar error in planning an english curriculum would be to assume that all pupils have contact with english and exposure to it in the home and neighborhood so we have studied uh, the factors how these are associated with uh, the learning uh, the foreign language in association with uh, the cognitive process cognitive style and field independent and field independent uh, and the language attitude so hope uh, you have uh, come to uh, understanding that how the cognitive process and cognitive styles and uh, uh, how the different factors and influencing on learning a language uh, in the in this video um, please uh, uh, go through the thoroughly in this uh, aspect and uh, don't forget to wear the mask and uh, maintaining the social distance is very important in this pandemic situation so let us protect ourselves and protect others also thank you thank you very much and uh, read well and score thank you